let's quickly look at the five days agenda. So we have already covered testing basics on day one. We talked about defects yesterday. Today will be dedicated for SQL <clears throat> and database concept. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about Python. And day five will be uh, test automation um, basics. So let's move on. First thing <clears throat> to um, cover today, before we even uh, start learning the language of uh, SQL, we need to understand how applications are built, uh, how <clears throat> uh, the, the data is actually uh, uh, flows from the front end to the back end. And uh, so that's that's an important uh, concept here. But to understand that, you need to um, uh, you need to know that software has layers. Right? Software has layers. So uh, let's look at this uh, picture here. So whenever you are using any application uh, like a Facebook or uh, Instagram, you look at the presentation layer. What you're looking at is the presentation layer. This is where you can click, drag and drop, and you know input values, and actually input your information, right? Whenever you're registering, opening a new account, you choose an account name for yourself, or that you know you enter your uh, personal information and also your pictures, and then you start uploading your videos and all, all of that. You're performing all those actions using the presentation layer or the front end. And we also call it as a graphical user interface, whether it's a mobile application or whether it's a web-based application that you're using uh, your laptop regardless. Uh, so uh, this is the presentation layer. Then comes, which is in the middle, application layer. So this is where the main logic, business logic of the application lives, right? So, and this is, uh, so this section is actually created using um, uh, programming languages such as Python uh, or C Sharp, for example. If I just go back to the presentation layer, presentation layer uh, is, is created using, um, scripting language called uh, HTML and CSS. And if you will be going into automation, test automation, you need to know the basics uh, of HTML as well. And that's what we also teach in as part of our courses, because uh, to be able to interact with the front end of the application, you need to understand uh, <clears throat> how the uh, pro, you know front end or the presentation layer is built, which is based on the HTML um, uh, language. So further, in the middle, we have application layer. And at the end, at the very end, we have a data layer. So what is a data layer? This, uh, this uh, shape here, um, <clears throat> uh, which looks like a container, is, is actually a container. And the purpose of this uh, container is to keep your data, the data that you have entered basically. And um, if you think of um, calculator, for example, right, if it's a calculator application, um, if it's a very simple calculator application, it doesn't store any data. It, does, it just, you know, makes the calculation for you, adds numbers and calculates and it multiplies, and the data is just gone, right? It doesn't keep your history um, and so on, or your personal information. Uh, but if we're talking about most of the other applications that we're using these days, uh, like a Telegram, for example, um, those applications have huge databases, huge databases, huge data layers. Basically, that's where all the information is kept, your videos, your pictures, and uh, your phone number, obviously your name and everything, right? So, so what is data, right? Data is information. So it's simple as that. And um, so today we're gonna focus on that layer, 
right? So data layer. So how do you actually store the data? How do you store the data? Or where do you store the data, right? So we, we know that there's some data layer, but what does it look like? So the answer is that data is kept in tables, which consists of rows and columns. Now, I'm sure it reminds you of something like Excel files, right? I'm sure you have used Microsoft Excel uh, or any other spreadsheet application like Google Sheets, right? That That's also another uh, uh, <clears throat> you know similar application to Microsoft Excel. There you have columns and rows, uh, but usually the difference is that instead of the column names, you have like A, B, C, D, E, you know, the alphabetic. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, but in in actual tables uh, that keep the data, uh, you have the column names. Like as you can see here, first name, last name, so that you can identify. So that you know programmers can also uh, understand where to save the data, where to get the data from. Right. So this column is is the purpose of this column is to keep first name and and then. The, and then there's another column for city, or there's another column for postal code, for example. So now we we understand that, uh, all right, so data is kept in the data layer, and also it's kept in the tables, which has rows and columns. So where do we actually keep the tables then, right? Where are those tables? So tables are kept in a container called database. That's uh, usually this shape is used to represent the database. And if you will be, you know, learning the documentation requirement documents, and most likely you will you will see that uh, shape as a representation of a, of a database. So database uh, consists of tables. It can be 10 tables, it can be 100 tables. And tables are not the only uh, uh, objects, let's uh, use the word here, that are kept in the database. There are some other concepts such as stored procedures, functions, and views. that are also kept in the database, but that's certainly not um, the uh, scope of this uh, discussion today. So we're gonna look into the tables exclusively today and we're going to learn how to interact with the tables how to get data from tables and um and, and so on so obviously next question is okay so the data is kept there in the, in the tables tables are in the database and so how can we actually talk to the database right this is when the sql comes into picture this is this is the moment that uh, you know you need to learn, you need to know uh, the language so that you can actually interact uh, with the database. Here's a fun uh, picture for you. The person is trying to interrogate the database, but then you have to speak the language, right? So uh, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Structured Query Language. And, um, and the reason why, you know, it is not a complete programming language like a like Python or uh, or JavaScript uh, for that uh, matter. It is a query language, and the query means you are requesting something sort of uh, from from the database, right? That's that's why it's it's a, a structured query language rather than a programming language, and it's much easy easier, you know much, much easier um, in comparison to other uh, languages in that it, it sounds like a plain English, basically. And you will uh, see it in a, in a moment. All right, so <clears throat> without um, any further delay, let's practice, right? So whenever you're learning uh, any programming language mm, uh, or, or query language uh, in, in that, uh, situation or any foreign language, like if you're learning Spanish, uh, the more you practice speaking the language, the better you're going to get uh, good at it, right? So it's 
mostly about practice. Um, and therefore, uh, that's what we're going to try to do today. So we're just going to open, I'm going to give you a link as well, where uh, there is an online platform. You can you can practice along with me, or you can just uh, just you know observe how how I'm performing uh, <clears throat> the exercises. In the actual, uh, of course, you know the course uh, as part of the actual course, uh, it is not in a more of a instead of being in a listen only mode, it is more interactive. We let everybody. Uh, practice and share their screens and and so on. But this is uh, again, it's um, the purpose here is to give you overall idea about the uh, about the concepts. So let me give you the link here first. Let's just put it into the chat. All right. So I just sent to everybody a link. And that link is something that I'm going to open here as well. All right, so <clears throat> we're looking into um, a platform called W3 Schools. And here you can actually practice uh, <clears throat> the SQL. So on the right-hand side, you can say, you can see that it says your database. So it is really talking about one database here. And inside that database, we have several tables. And table has a name. So it says customers table or employees table, for example, right? And if you click on the customers table, it automatically creates this uh, query for you. And then if you run the SQL, right, it is basically returning all the information data from that table. So the first concept or the keyword that we're going to learn is select, right? So let's just go back to our slides. So select. Select statement is used to retrieve the records. So basically to select the records. So you're basically asking the database to give you data, to show you data, right? So that it's, it's displayed on the screen. So in going back so what is the what's the purpose of this star here so star means basically all the columns so we're saying give me all the columns from this customer's table now what if i wanted to look only in specific columns so select just show me only the customer name and then the customer address so you can you can mention the column names. You say select and then customer name, comma, address, right? So the column names will be listed using a comma. And then there is another keyword called from, right? Again, as I said, basic English. From which table? From the customer's table. And you run the SQL. Uh, and as you can see, uh, that's the result that we just received, right? So we are requesting the system to, to or the database to give us only two columns, only two columns, customer name and address, and that's what it's returning. But instead, it, we, we can just go back and just put a star, which means all the columns, right? So star means all the columns. So select star from the customers. Right. Yes. Asterisk. That's another word to say. <clears throat> All right. So now let's go back to uh, our uh, slide. And then there, the second important concept that you are going to look into is a distinct select distinct now let's actually let's select all the countries first right so i'm just going to copy paste here so i'm just going to select uh only the country column here right so if i just uh run the sql then i can see that 
you to return the country column and just look at the number of records here. It is 91 records here, right? 91 records. But if I go through the records, I can see that a Mexico repeating twice. Okay, so there, you know, there were two records from Mexico, and I can see other uh, France is here, you know, twice, Venezuela. So, and the task here is I want to see the distinct, uh, unique countries from this table, right? So, which from which countries we have records from uniquely. I just don't want to see the repetitions, right? So, in this particular case, you just write plain English word distinct, right? Which means unique. So, again, just look at the number of records here 91 when i run the sequel now it's down to 21 so we have 21 unique um <clears throat> records when it comes to country right 21 unique country names in this table so we can uh try this with uh some other table here as well so if we go to uh let's say products right so we have products and there are Okay, so let's, uh, from the products, let's select the column price, for example. So it, we have 77 records, and this is the uh, price of the, all the products. And I want to see how many distinct prices we have, right? So if we run, as you can see now, it's down to 62. So it looks like we have several products that have uh, the same price sort of, right? So that's another important concept, select distinct. All right, so, <clears throat> so from your end as well, so I just gave you the link, see if you can uh, repeat after me, see if you can uh, try as well. And if you have any questions, uh, type in the uh, chat box. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back. So we looked into the select, we looked into select distinct, and the purpose of the select distinct was to retrieve unique records from the database, right? Or in this case, from the table. So another important, uh, or the next uh, keyword that we're gonna learn today is the order by, order by. Again, plain English. So you're basically trying to order or sort, right? you you know if you um ever i'm sure you you know you have a, a amazon account and then if you're searching for a product there is a sort drop down there and then you use the sort drop down and then you uh you try to sort by uh you know highest number of uh, reviews or uh price from low to high and, and so on right you can do the sorting so just like that you can perform sorting uh, in, uh, in SQL as well, whenever you're writing your SQL queries. So let's try that. So if we select star here again from the products first, if we select everything from the products table, so again, so whenever you say just select star, you are saying, give me all the columns. And, okay, so there's another um, request here. So we want to order it by the price then. Okay, so let's just order by, and we're gonna put the column name. Which column you want to order that by, right? So run SQL. Now, as you can see, the, um, the rows, right, or the records, just got ordered, just got sorted. And by default, right, by default, that means um, whenever you just use order by, what, you know, how does the system know? How, how do you wanna order? Do you wanna order from max to minimum or minimum to maximum? By default, it's gonna order from minimum to maximum, right, by default. That's, it just, it assumes that that's what you want. Uh, and in uh, in programming a language, it's called ascending, right? By default, it's ascending. So as you can see, it is uh, it just sorted from the lowest price to the all the way to the highest price, right? Now, 
if we want to change that order and then make it basically flip it right now we we want to see the highest price first and then at the end the lowest price right so we just want to sort from max to min and then you're going to go and then put in this uh, another keyword here that's called desc that that stands for descending right this stands for descending so another english word so if i run the sql again now you can see the price uh you know the highest prices here uh, on top and then the lowest prices uh, at the bottom now all right so before i move on let's just see yes yes ascending descending that's right okay um all right so let's uh continue now order by can also be done by just mentioning the um, place of the column or the order of the column right so if, if i just say instead of um product name for example right so if i just i can put product name it ordered by product name but i could also just put two here right why because product name is our second column right so i could just run that and you can also run uh or or mention the um uh columns with the comma so i'm saying first order by product name and then by the supplier id something like that or you can just or you can say first order by um the product name and then order by uh you know some other column like the third column or fifth column uh, you know or whatever so uh, that's also the possibility all right so um let's go back to our slides <clears throat> now so the definition of the order by is again order retrieved records right or sort the retrieved records so the next concept that we're going to learn here is the where is the where right so where is a filter so think of the where as just the filter that you want to apply uh, to the results right so you don't want to see all the results but you just want to see uh the records from mexico for example right how about that so if you want to do that um <clears throat> that's what you can try to do and then going back to the same uh you know uh comparison with the amazon application for example you have an option of choosing show me only the products which has two-day delivery right so this is when you are actually applying filters right you're you're not ordering now anymore you're not sorting but you're applying a filter additional filter so and that's achieved by the where clause in sql so let's go back here let's just we can just go back to the customers table run see all the customers here and then i say you know i want to see only the customers from where country is equal to and within the single quotes we're going to put the country name like germany or it can be mexico so and i'm going to run the query and as you can see it just returned only 11 records here only 11 records and you can check the country column here all of them are from germany right so <clears throat> there is um one uh a concept called commenting uh or commenting out in any programming language which means sometimes you don't want to execute part of the of your code right in that particular case uh in sql you can just put two uh dash signs here right if you put that it will uh the script will actually ignore that line so it's uh basically saying okay so i'm you know i'm going to execute this but i'm going to ignore whatever is in the second line so we're going to run that again as you can see just executed the first line ignored the second line because 
I put those, you know, two dash signs here and the color also changed as you can see. And I, I have 91 records. Now I want to use, uh, you know, the initial example that we had. Let's just go back and put the Mexico here and comment, remove that, you know, comment sign and then run it again. Now we have five records from Mexico, right? So this is how you use the where clause. Now we'll be using the where clause uh, with some additional exercises uh, as well. Let's just go back. <clears throat> so here's another uh, interesting uh, keyword here, which is like, right? Like is when you don't know the exact keyword or the uh, or the term that you're looking for or exact text that you're looking for but you're look but you know that it is something like that it starts with an a uh or the, all the countries that start with g uh or <clears throat> or the description um going back to the amazon application again so let's say you know you're purchasing um a certain you know computer uh from uh, from Amazon, and then you want to make sure that it is compatible uh, uh, with your, um, well, let's say, certain you know type of phone or with a webcam that you have, and then, and then in the review section, you you have you can search. You can just type in and then say webcam, and it will actually do the search and it'll look for all the all the reviews that has a webcam word in it, right? This is this is when. Behind the scenes, there's a SQL query that's running with a, with a keyword that's called like. It's called like a pattern searching, right? So let's let's try to let's try to see uh, uh, such example here. And pro probably products would be uh, a good example here. Let me see categories. Categories uh, seems like a good example here. So we want to select records from the categories where the description is like um sweet right so the trick here is that you have to use this percentage sign and then surround your uh the pattern that you're looking for right so you want to say i'm not sure where it is it's somewhere in there it can be at the beginning, it can be at the end, or maybe it's in the middle of the text, wherever you can find, as long as that's a, there's a, a word called, uh, you know, sweet, and give me those records. So if I run this query, now it can, as you can see, just return two records. Uh, first record here, it has a sweet, and there's another one that it has a sweet here as well, right? So what if, you were uh, looking for a record that starts with sweet, but you don't know how it ends. So you are now you know that it, the first word is the sweet, right? So you just remove uh, the percentage sign from the beginning. You remove the percentage sign from the beginning and you say, I know how it starts, but I don't know how it ends, you know? Uh, so, and then if you run, as you can see, only the first record left because it starts with right game. Um, those keywords will be exercised over and over again. But um, uh, if you compare it with other programming language, certainly uh, you know SQL is much easier because it is you know uh, plain English, uh, and also as a, as a tester. For the most part of your work, you will be using uh, select statements, which is you will try to retrieve data from the database, right? Retrieve uh, information from the tables uh, and then compare that uh, information with the expected results that are described uh, in the documentation. Uh, there's a special document called data mapping document for that. We'll, you know, we'll cover that as part of our course as well, as part of our ETL. Uh, of course, I'll talk about ETL also uh, separately today. So, and, and it just comes with practice. As I said, you know, just like with uh, learning any other uh, foreign language, 
you have to practice more. You have to make mistakes. And you are going to make mistakes. And that's how you're going to learn, right? You're going to make mistakes uh, like you're going to forget that from, for example. You're just typing in saying, you're going to say select star and category. Then you see that you, you're going to get this error message. So, oh, I forgot the from, right? So that's how it happens. And then, uh, or maybe you will, you know, you're typing in one, uh, you know, column name, and then, and then all of a sudden you you forgot that comma sign here again. So that's another error message. Or uh, where description like, but then instead of putting um, um, a percentage sign, you put a different sign or, you know, something like that, or you forgot the percentage sign uh, completely and it doesn't return anything, right? Um, or the where clause, for example, or the where, you know, uh, keyword, you forget that. So those are called as a syntax errors, as a syntax errors. Just like when you're learning any, you know, other language, you learn the syntax of the language, right? First, you put the, let's say, a certain uh, type of word and then the other word. So it's just uh, the way um, uh, you, uh, you learn how to speak a language. And just like that, uh, you're going to learn how to write the SQL in a correct way uh, through practice and through making mistakes and learning from your mistakes and, uh, and so on. You will learn how to read the error messages um, uh, and, and so on. So let's, uh, let me just take a look at the why is, okay, it's a good question. Why is, why the table isn't? So it doesn't have to be. So the question is, why do I see this uh, hard brackets here? So, um, so the platform here is by default putting the hard brackets here. And, uh, but it doesn't have to be. So if we just, if I just put this uh, signs here as well, and you can just uh, see that. It doesn't um, have to be that way. And it's also case insensitive. So you can type it with a capital uh, C or the lowercase C. Uh, either way, it would actually um, <clears throat> uh, you know, work in the same way. So we, we looked into the like. Uh, that's, that's an interesting concept and you know, that uh, uh, you can practice. And um, let's just go back. Here's another um, <clears throat> several, basically, you know, operators, comparison and operators that you can use um, in SQL or in any other programming language. And some of them I mentioned yesterday, actually, how programmers make mistakes when they are using these operators. Instead of putting uh, a greater sign, they put greater and equal sign and, and, and so on, right? This is where most of the errors or bugs uh, happen. But you can use those uh, <clears throat> signs or operators in SQL as well. Going back to the same example with the Amazon or any other shopping uh, uh, application, like a Best Buy, for example, uh, you can also give a, you know, a filter. Uh, whenever you're searching, when, it, when you say, let's say, I'm looking for uh, a flashlight that costs uh, less than $50 or from $50 to $100, right? So th that kind of request also, you know, very common and it's, you know, it's logical. Um, and that comes uh, was and it's achieved by using uh, these operators. So let's practice these operators here. <clears throat> We can go to the products table, and that's where we have some numbers like price, for example, right? So we're gonna say again, where, right? So whenever you are trying to apply any filter, when you, whenever you're trying to apply any filter, you start with the keyword where, right? So we're gonna say where the price is, for example, I want to see anything lower than $10, and um, let's see if we have anything lower than $10. Yes, we do, right? So we have some products that are lower than $10 right here. So what if I wanna say, oh, let's include the 10 as well. 
let's make it inclusive, lower or equal 10. Now we have some other products here, which has the same, you know, the exact number here as $10. Now, <clears throat> how about we go with more than $10? So yes, it retrieved all the records with more than $10. You can do more than or equal to $10. And we have the 10, inclusive here as well. And the number of records also change depending on which operator uh, you are using. So another important operator here is not equal sign, right? So there are two ways of actually using it. So here we just say not, I think let's, let's use not, not use the price, but let's use the first column, which is a product ID here. So for the product ID, we're just gonna say, do not return uh, where the product ID is not equal to one. So I wanna see all the records, but not the, the first record, which has a product ID of you know, equal to one. So if I run this query, now you can see that it starts from two, right? We skip the one. If I put two here, not equal to two, and as you can see, it just skipped the second record. Now there's another way of actually uh, saying not, which is uh, with the exclamation mark and then equals to. So it works the same way. So <clears throat> as you can see, we're skipping the three and let's skip the three. Uh, now we're skipping the three, right? So one, two, and we're skipping this three, uh, product ID three, because we are saying, I want to see all the records, but it should not be equal to um, uh, this particular uh, number, right? So if we go back to the customers and then see it in, also in that example, but this time we're gonna deal with text instead of numbers, right? So we're gonna say where the country is not equal to Germany. So just exclude the Germany, basically, right? So we're saying everything, but not Germany. And same thing here, everything, but not Germany, okay? All right, so let's see, we have some questions here. So I test in my charm, okay. Um, all right, so it's a non-SQL question. Will you te teach how to write tests in PyCharm? So for, um, as part of our automation um, uh, courses, we're gonna uh, use a tool called Visual Studio Code, right? So PyCharm is another integrated development environment, IDE. So that means, you know, ID, the purpose of the integrated development environment is to make developers, uh, coders life easier by giving you hints and uh, auto completion of your code and, and so on. So we're gonna cover that certainly as part of our courses. Um, but the PyCharm is one of those tools, but as part of our uh, automation courses, we use Visual Studio Code. Uh, if, I hope that answers uh, your question. Like where if it was more of a, you know, Java type of projects, then the best tool to use is uh, IntelliJ IDEA. Um, right, so let's move on. Right, so the less, I just got another question about the lesson one and two. Let me just put this into the chat box right now for everyone. Here's a link. I just sent, this is the record, recorded sessions uh, previous sessions. And if you actually uh, subscribe uh, to our uh, YouTube channel as well, you will certainly get uh, the um, remaining of the lessons as well. So we're recording and then posting it uh, to the YouTube. Okay. So uh, let's move on. Let's move on. <clears throat> In and between, right? Those are the two uh, Another important uh, concept uh, that we're gonna uh, learn today. This is when you want to um, uh, 
uh, you want to get more efficient, then you're using multiple values when whenever you're comparing, uh, um, whenever you're, you, you know, trying to achieve some filter uh, in your SQL query. So uh, let me give you an example. So we want to say, I want to select, uh, show me the uh, all the records from Germany and Mexico, right? It has to be either Germany or Mexico. Uh, and if, if you're trying to achieve that, that's uh, also possible. <clears throat> so we're instead of saying just Germany, for example, we're gonna say Germany and Mexico, right? So if we say select star from customers, select all the you know columns from the customers where country is in Germany and Mexico. So if you run the query now, the result will, will be you have Germany and then you have Mexico, but only that's it. So we excluded all the other countries um, uh, except for you know uh, Germany and Mexico, right? So that's the idea here. And you could also do it with numbers. If we go back and then uh, look into the orders here, for example. So we want to see the orders that were placed by the employee three and nine, for example. So we're just gonna say where employee ID is in three and nine, right? If I run the query now, as you can see, now we got only the records or the orders that were made by two specific employees, right? Um, so this is the idea uh, of using the in operator, basically. All right, so let's go back. <clears throat> the next one was between, right? So now um, we want to say uh, all the products that are between, you know, ten and twenty dollars. If you remember that, that was uh, something that we were uh, trying to do. Let's just go to the orders. It was actually products. Let's go to the products and then and then retrieve only those products where the price is between let's say five uh, and ten, right? So we're gonna say where price between. Again, I just want to remind that uh, um, to everybody uh, one more time. It is plain English. It just comes very natural as you start practicing, and as as part of our uh, uh, courses, we actually give lots of homework, and uh, and the homeworks are uh, checked individually, and and the feedback is provided, uh, and and it's very intensive. So you will have lot you know a lot of chance to practice, basically, and also we ask you to share your screen during the lessons as well, and then and then perform a certain task, and then it just goes like one from one person to another person. So you just see. You just do it yourself and then watch other person do it. Uh, and um, you know, over time, uh, you it just comes natural to you, right? And and those are the um uh basics, and you're gonna go a little you know further and further uh to a more complicated topics uh, in SQL. All right, so where price is between five and ten. Actually, I coded a little bit this one closer to in, so it has to be this way. So between five and 10. So if we run it, as you can see, <clears throat> only those records where the price is between. Now you pay attention, you can see the 10 here as well. Now, because between is inclusive, so it, it includes the 10 as well. Right, the borders. Like if we say when we say five and ten, it includes the uh, ten here as well. If I say ten to twenty, for example, and then run, you can see that uh, you know twenty here is also included, and uh, we have the ten here, and 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 we we can order uh, with the price. See. That's that's the common mistake that uh, people make 
and um, and you're gonna you're gonna learn uh, by making mistakes. So I just forgot to put buy here. Order buy price, right? So we're gonna run, and we it just uh, returned the price uh, in an ordered uh, way, in a sorted way, and then you can see that it starts from ten and ends with with twenty p.m. All right. So let's go back and uh, what else we were gonna actually learn today. So and or and not. So you can combine you can combine your filters together as well. So you can actually mention uh, uh, several filters here. So if you can, uh, if, you, if we just go back to our exercise here, mm, let's go to customer. All right, so uh, let's first <clears throat> select all the customers that are from Germany, right? Let's start with that, where country is equal to Germany. Now, a common mistake that uh, newly uh, starters uh, do is that they forget this uh, quotation mark as well. So if you run, then you're going to get this error message here. Uh, you see, that's a difference between the keywords of SQL and the text that you're typing in, uh, right? So if you're comparing to against a certain value, then that value, if it's a text, uh, and we'll talk about data types uh, <clears throat> in the actual courses, um, that if it's, a, if it's a text, then it has to be within the quotation marks, right? So all the... Um, uh, all the records from Germany. Now, all the records from Germany, but then we want to apply another filter here. So another filter, I would, I'm just going to say when the customer ID is less than 20, for example. So that can be done by using the end operator. So we're going to say end customer ID is less than 20, for example, right? So as you can see, now we apply two different filters here. We're saying from Germany, but at the same time, uh, give me the customer IDs, which are less than 20, right? So uh, going back to um, our slide here, you can also use the command or, logical, right? So you, you, you wanna say, oh, give me the uh, uh, customers from, either Germany, um, right? Or you can say customer country is from Mexico. Oh, you see another mistake that you're gonna see that you need to put the quotation mark in the correct place, right? So what I did was, I accidentally put the quotation mark after the uh, uh, parenthesis. So I'm just, just have to go back and put it inside the parenthesis and we run. Now we can see that we have Germany and Mexico, but also at the same time, uh, we are filtering based on the customer ID, right? Okay, so going back, the last, uh, I would say, the concept here that we're going to look into uh, is the not. Not is basically um, is a way to negate the operator. So instead of saying like, you can say not like, right? So uh, that's something that we can try to do right now. If we go back to the was it categories? Yes. So. We're gonna to go to categories and we're gonna to to look for this description again, where the description was like um, coffees, right? Coffees, but don't forget the percentage signs that is, here we go, right? So it found this particular record, which has a coffees or teas, put the teas, maybe we can get more, not nah, same. So, but instead of saying that, saying like, now we wanna get anything that doesn't have T's in it, right? Not like T's. 
and you're going to get all the other records which has no uh, T's or the suite for that matter, right? We, we, we don't like suite, so we, we're going to say not like. So again, plain English, if you think of it that way, and therefore, um, it is sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, specializing in SQL, and, and, and there's another very important specialization called ETL uh, testing, is in, in a complexity, it's somewhere between the manual testing uh, and the automation testing, right? If, uh, if you ask my opinion. So, all right, so let's, let me see if, uh, okay, all right, any more questions here? We're gonna try to answer later on. Okay, so let's go back to our slides. So this was um, a general, um, uh, introduction basically to SQL. Uh, uh, before I move on, actually, before we wrap it up, let me just show you the actual, uh, the tool that you will be using, right? You will be practicing online in, in, in this kind of platforms as well. But apart from that, uh, certainly, you know, in a real work environment, you will not be using the platform that you just saw, but you will be using actual tools such as uh, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So as you can see here, when I talked about databases at the beginning, um, those items here with this black icon here are the databases, right? And the databases, they contain tables. As you can see, it says tables. And as I mentioned, there are other objects other than, you know, other than tables such as views and then uh, store procedures and functions, but that's certainly uh, not something that QA tester would be interacting with much. Uh, you know, that's something that developers develop, and um, but we also give introduction uh, or basic knowledge about those other concepts as well. But for the most part, you will be interacting with the tables. And as I mentioned, databases, they contain tables, uh, right? So here, are some of the examples of the tables. And just like the queries that you were running on the platform, you will be running queries here as well. Just click on a new query and start typing your select statement. Select all the columns from production.location, for example. So this is the uh, uh, table, uh, table name. Now, whatever is coming before the table name, it's called a table schema, but that's something that certainly you don't wanna concern uh, yourself with at the moment. As you can see, that's the results. And again, you can, you can run the same concept here where location ID, you see, this is when I talked about uh, <clears throat> integrated development environment, it is, it is a tool that is supposed to make your life easier or the programmer's life easier. In this particular case, you're also writing a code. And the, the purpose of this uh, you know, tool is to make your life easier by, by giving you uh, hints or auto completion options. So as you can see, as soon as I started typing location, it is giving me the column name here, right? It says, oh, do you mean location ID? So I can just hit tab and and then complete my query. So where the location ID is equal to 50. So I just want to select this particular record, for example, right? This record right here. So I'm gonna run the query and then it just gives me this particular record here, right? So again, this tool uh, will be installed in your computer. We provide all the instructions, installation instructions, uh, and you will be practicing um, in that tool along with other uh, platforms that you will be using initially. All right, so going back to our slides. So um, let me just uh, uh, briefly talk about the uh, the job market as well. On the still, you know, staying on the same topic of SQL, right? Here's one uh, job position, very recent junior manual tester position. It's a manual tester position, but you, as you can see, they're requesting for SQL experience as well. So remember, and keep that in mind, that even if you are applying for a manual testing testing position, 
uh, they're always expecting you to know the uh, SQL and to speak the SQL language and to have this strong experience in SQL. Because as I explained, explained at the very beginning, applications are, they are, they consist of layers, right? And then if you're testing the application, then you're certainly, you know, you will be in a situation that you will be expected to validate uh, the data layer as well, apart from the presentation layer, right? So you will mostly be interacting with the presentation layer and uh, and the data layer as well, right? So here's another job opportunity, but this is more of a specialization now. As I mentioned, this is something in complexity, something between, com you know, comparatively between the manual tester and automation tester position, but it's also a very specific specialization and they're very good uh, opportunities uh, in that um, ETL testing uh, uh, direction. Uh, and as you can see here, they're requesting for ETL and database testing and also uh, hands-on SQL experience uh, as well. So what is ETL now, right? So let's just briefly talk about that before we uh, wrap up for today. So ETL is a process of moving the data from one place to another place, right? So as you can see on the left-hand side here, so you have a bunch of databases, usually smaller databases, those databases that, that are faster actually. Um, and, and the task here is to get the data, to collect the data from several different data sources and then put it into the more centralized uh, uh, and huge, data storage called data warehouse. And these days, those data warehouses are more and more on the cloud, on the cloud. And then, and then job positions are also requesting more uh, cloud experience these days. Okay, so in your task uh, as a tester, in this particular case, you will be called an ETL tester, right? And the ETL stands for extract, transform, and load. Right, so extract, which is take the data and using, and surprisingly, just using the select statements that you were just looking now. Take the data, extract the data, transform it. Transform means, you know, change it uh, in a certain way. And we're gonna learn how to change uh, uh, or transform the data uh, and, <clears throat> and then load it to the, to the target. Now, you do not, perform this task. This is the job of the developer, right? This is the job of the ETL developers. They're going to write a code that will take the data from the source, transform, and load it. Your task as a tester would be to val validate it, to verify or to check it that it is being extracted and transformed and loaded correctly. Correctly, as expected, as we say, right? And where do you get your expected conditions? From requirement documents. Now, in this case, in ETL type of projects, your expected conditions will come from a document called data mapping document. And this is uh, also uh, something that we, you know, we provide to our uh, students and then they learn this document and then they try to create queries to validate this data transformation because uh, this is exactly what uh, you will be doing as an ETL tester. Next lesson, we will be speaking uh, about Python. So just like we learned how to speak a little bit of SQL, we're going to learn to speak Python tomorrow. Um, so uh, stay tuned.